From cars and planes to trucks and ships, oil makes the world go round. Not just conventional crude oil, but new kinds of oil, like the stuff they're digging out of Canada. There's enough bitumen oil sand beneath this chunk of frozen landscape to keep the world turning for a century and a half. But getting it out takes some ingenious engineering. It's minus 20. It's the depths of winter. And in this remote corner of Alberta, Canada, Chris Donahue and his crew are drilling a half meter wide, kilometer long hole. Okay, just let me know when you're ready there, boss. What we're doing now is we're bringing singles of heavyweight drill pipe up to the floor. The hydraulic elevators latch onto the pipe, grab it, lift it up, we're gonna put it in our mouse hole. Then we're gonna do the same sequence over. It's beautiful. This is the new frontier in the world's search for cheap, efficient fuel. Beneath this frozen wilderness, there's enough black stuff to keep the world turning till the year 2250. Chris's rig is in the middle of five million square kilometers of wilderness. Under this forest lies the equivalent of all the crude in the Middle East. But the stuff under here is what's called unconventional oil. Unlike the normal stuff, it's as sticky as peanut butter, and it's under no kind of natural pressure. So it won't come gushing out all by itself. It needs to be coaxed. Here at Suncor's firebag operation, they've come up with a way of doing just that. With liquid oil, you can just stick one giant metal straw in the ground and suck it out. But to get at this dirty, sticky, lumpy stuff, they have to drill dozens of holes. Of course, building a whole new oil rig for each hole would be incredibly slow and expensive. The solution is a rig that can walk between the holes. This is the Neighbours Drilling Rig 102, one of the most advanced drilling rigs in the world. It may not hit high speeds, but it's really very fast for an oil rig. With a mobile rig, instead of drilling just one hole, they can drill 32 at each site or pad. Once they've drilled into the bitumen oil sands, the next problem is getting it out. Hey, stab her on there and we'll uh, spin her in. Ordinary crude is liquid and easily pumped up. But to get this semi-solid stuff out, they have to soften it first. And for that, they need steam. Two kilometers away at the Firebag steam generation plant, water is heated to 300 degrees Celsius and more than 100 times atmospheric pressure. The pressure drives the steam through the two kilometers of pipes back to the wellhead. It can take up to 72 hours for the steam to take effect, so there's nothing to do but wait until the mix of muck and oil starts to melt. But while normal oil flows freely once it's out of the ground, bitumen would solidify and block the pipes if it was allowed to cool. To keep it liquid, it's kept at a high temperature. The temperature of the vessel needs to be hot in order to keep the bitumen flowing. If, if you don't have the temperature, the product sets up at room temperature and becomes like uh, uh, asphalt. So that's why you need the temperature, is, is to keep it, more, uh, keep it more fluid, less viscous. But this heavy oil is still mixed with water from the steam that was pumped down the well. And water is not what you want in your fuel. Luckily for Suncor, they have gravity on their side. As the saying goes, oil and water don't mix. That's because hot oil, unlike blood, is thinner than water and floats on top. With a little help. We are adding 100 milliliters of varsol, and we're adding our sample of oil, and we're spinning it in the centrifuge, and it separates the water from the oil so we can tell how much water we have left. After separation, the oil is ready for refining. The 
The trouble is, the dense, sticky petroleum that comes from oil sands is just too heavy for everyday use. Running a normal engine on the stuff would be like lighting a cigarette with a tree. The solution is to break down the chains of molecules that make it heavy and sticky in a process known as cracking in the coker machine. So we've cracked the long chains to actually convert the, the, heavy, the heavy oil into uh, lighter, more valuable components. They get rid of the big lumps by heating the oil to 500 degrees Celsius so it vaporizes. And the heavy lumps of carbon that weigh the oil down are collected in vast coke drums. The hot, light oil vapors go to this 35 meter high column where they cool back into liquid. Like a fancy liqueur cocktail, the liquid settles into layers. The heavy stuff at the bottom of the column is gas oil. The lighter stuff at the top is like lighter fluid. And the most important bit collects in the middle, kerosene. This kerosene can then be upgraded into synthetic crude oil or turned directly into ultra-low sulfur diesel ready for use. This one plant is able to turn thick, heavy oil into over six million liters of clear diesel a day. In less than 20 minutes, this fuel truck is fully loaded with another 50,000 liters of diesel and on its way, helping to keep the world on the move.